been, girl? Where you been, huh? You know I need you more than ever just a van, huh? And lately I've been getting some. My name's Demario Whitfield, aka D Red. Let me vent. Let me vent. Damn, I need to vent. Getting closer to God. I was born in California, um, San Francisco. Uh, I moved to Texas when I was two or three. And everybody wanna see me live. Figure since I'm always sober, I be tripping over shit. I don't need a supplement. Temporary stimulus. I started rapping when I was a uh, when I was in third grade. I don't really remember what I wrote, but I'm pretty sure it sucked. He wasn't always there, but now he's trying. Explaining that he wasn't never hiding, and I love him for it. Wouldn't be a better man without him. Middle school, I started taking um rap pretty serious with uh Wild and Out came out. You know how uh, at the end. They, they do the little freestyle battle and uh, they kind of taught me how to rap. Like nobody knows this, but uh, that's really what um, taught me how to rap. And uh, in eighth grade, I, uh, I stole a microphone from my middle school because I know I was I wanted to be a rapper. So I, I was plotting on how I was gonna take it, and then at the last day of school, I took it. And um, all through transitioning into ninth grade the summer, I was just dropping like. It didn't matter how the quality was, I was just dropping songs on MySpace, Live Right, Live Right. And um, they kind of got me a little name at Central. And then eventually I started rapping at the little tables. And you know, everybody was like, oh, D Red, D Red, D Red. And it got to the point where I, all the older kids was acknowledging me that they thought I was older than what I really was. And I was just a freshman at the time. Fast forward into 10th grade, that's when I met the guys I'm with now, Black Nation. Well, that's Black Label back then. And um, it's, it was founded by Ace Money and J Mac. Uh, Ace, Ace didn't even want to put me in because I was the different guy in the group. Like I wasn't hood. Uh, I was just like a, a light skinned dude with pretty eyes and tight pants because that was when Jerk was like. So he was like, man, I don't really want to take no risk on this guy, but he can rap though. 2014 was a very hard year for me. Uh, from the very beginning, my brothers, my older brother and my younger brother, uh, they were really just getting into trouble. My uh, my little brother, he was still in school. I think he was in 11th grade, and um, he wasn't even. I think he was 16, matter of fact. And they were um, they were robbing people. They were beating up on people. Going to um, TDC. My big brother, he was going to jail, real jail. And um, they would get out and they would do good for a while, but then they'd always slowly moved back into doing what they was doing before and it finally it got them. you know I, I believe that uh, that was God way of saying y'all need to change the way y'all living or y'all can really get into some things for a while they were saying that my little brother wasn't gonna get out until like I believe like 2024 because his charges were that bad so um and let me remind you he was 16 when he went into jail they held him uh, until he was 17 and they tried him as an adult. So uh, they were in jail and my, my granny, who was almost the most healthiest person I've ever met, you know, she uh, she's real heavy in church. She always kept us in church every Sunday when we spent the night. And she was diagnosed with cancer. Kinda, it was kind of shocking because, like I said, she, she kept her body right, her health was right, she never really had no health related issues, and it just that quick when everything started going downhill. The more I go see her, the more smaller she looked, and you can tell like it was getting harder on her, but she'd always keep a smile on her face. She'd go to the MD, uh, MD Anderson to get uh, chemotherapy. And they were saying that it wasn't working for her and the hospital in Beaumont didn't tell her early. So when she got to MD Anderson, they had already, it had already spread. I got a call from my cousin and she was crying, she was boo-hooing, boo-hooing. And I'm like, yo, what's up, what's up? She was like, she's dead, she died. They was, they was putting her back on the bus so she can come back to Beaumont and they said that she just passed out and she just stopped moving. 
and I didn't know how to take it. I don't really like crying. I hate crying. That's like the worst thing in my eyes to do. But I dropped the phone and I was just boo-hooing because for her to just get diagnosed with cancer and die that fast before I could even really spend some time with it and get to, you know, let her know, you know, how much I really cared about her, like that she was gone. And around that time I was I was doing bad. You know, I was I, I was couch hopping, you know, staying somewhere I really shouldn't have been staying, you know, but by the grace of God, the um, the people that I was staying with allowed me to stay in the guest room. Um, I was eating ramen noodles and brown sugar oatmeal like every day like it got to the point where I'm already skinny but I mean my ribs was like showing really bad I was getting sick didn't have no job I couldn't I mean I could have kept one but I didn't really want to work so on top of being homeless just about I didn't want to work so no income was coming in so I had to really eat what I could so for, my, for me to hit up my momo passed on me it was just like the burden just got that much more heavy on my life, and I'm only 19 at the time. You know, my mom was was trying to get me to to remove tattoos so I could go to the military, and a lot of other things was going on at the time too. And it was just getting harder and harder and harder for me, and I didn't really know how to deal with it. So normally, when I'm depressed and when I'm going through things, I break down and it'll get me sick, I get pale, and my mom would always recognize when I was going through a deep depression. But with this situation, I knew I had to be strong knowing that my, my father was in jail at the time, his brother was in jail at the time, and both of my brothers was in jail. So I was the man for my older sister. And on top of that, I had my two little sisters was in the orphanage. So I hadn't seen them in years, so I, I feel like I had to be strong for my big sister, because we was the only ones that was really doing something right out of my father's kids. And they kind of, I knew I had to, that was a part of, that's what really made me grow up. Because I couldn't, I couldn't let that just get to me and then it, it get me in my depression and I don't want to mess with nobody. I knew that I had to turn that negative and make it a positive. I'm in college, you know, they, they say that if you don't go to college, after you graduate high school, you're not gonna want to go. They try to they try to put statistics and um, false scenarios into your brain so that you won't want to do it. That's a lie. I took a whole year off from school and went to college. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying I'm doing the best in college, but I'm here. You know what I'm saying? I broke that statistic. I don't believe in I don't believe in stereotypes. I really don't. Uh, they say that if you you hang with people that smoke, you smoke. I hang, I, all my friends smoke, but I don't smoke. You know, a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people see me and be like, yo, you smoke. You know, you, you gotta smoke. You always look high. I, I don't. You know, it's just genetics. This is how I look. I know without them, I wouldn't be doing a lot of things I do. And I don't go to church every Sunday, but I do wake up and I give him his thanks. I acknowledge him and everything I do. So I feel like that's really all he really wants. Like, I'm not. Like you can go to church every Sunday, I don't mean you just holy, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, I just give them thanks and I get blessed for it, you know? And I do little things. When I see um, when people ask for donations, I, I give them, you know, even if I don't have it, you know, cause I know I'm gonna get it right back. And um, yeah, I really believe that when I started giving God thanks, my blessings just started rolling in, rolling in back to back to back to back to back. And I started meeting more people like genuine people, not just people that's gonna be here temporarily. I'm, I'm building long-term relationships with people and they, they mess with me just off of how I talk. You know, I'm 20, but my mind is so far accelerated than where I am right now. Cause I done did so much at a young age that now it's like, only thing I got left to do is really become successful in my career, start a family and, and make way for the next person to come in and get the blessings I got. And um, we only in March, um, April right now, and a lot of good stuff has just been happening for me. And I ain't saying I'm just, you know, I'm just living lavish. You know, I'm living a famous life, but I'm living pretty good to say I'm only 20. I'm doing a lot of things that people older than me are trying to get to right now. You know, so I'm just, uh, if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. 
just one for God. My, my little brother wouldn't be seeing light until he was almost 30. You know, like really being able to be in the world until he's 30. You know, and I really feel like God seen the genuine heart that my little brother has and gave him a second chance. And me and my mom have a stronger bond now. You know, I'm not saying we just, we just, you know, we wasn't the best of, you know, mother and son, but now we're really tight, like we're click tight, like how we used to be. Like all I had was my mama coming up. Like my father wasn't in my life. So growing up, it was me and my mom, you know what I'm saying? But now we back on that, you know, me, it's me and my mama used to work. Man, I really feel like what's different about me is that I'm giving, I feel like I'm bringing real hip hop back. You know, um, my my views on a rapper, when I think of a rapper, I think lyrics, delivery, and message. So nowadays, people don't really, they're, they're not lyric driven. They're not, they don't really have no messages. So I feel like with me, being 20, once again, being young, for me to exhibit old school, real lyrical, like rap, that's what set me apart from unsigned artists, real artists, etc. You know, I'm giving you real. I don't I don't have no, I got a wristband on. I don't have no Rolex, you feel me? And I don't have a problem with telling people, yo, I don't got no Rolex, but I got this tight wristband, you feel me? Uh, like material things, that don't really mean that to me. So when I feel like when you give people you, that means you're comfortable with who you are and you want to spread your message. That's that's really what, what God wants you to do. When he bless you with a certain talent, he wants you to be comfortable with your talent and speak. You know, I, I think they say, um, the, the the power of the tongue, you know, I, I don't know what it is, but y'all know what it is. The power of the tongue is it, it, mighty, you know, it's real. For real, you can speak life like that, you can speak death like that. So I don't want to speak death. <laughs> so I'm going to speak my life and I'm going to hope somebody grasps that. You know, I'm just trying to, I'm really just trying to bring it back. So that's what, yeah, that's what really set me apart from everybody else. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get it. The real way. I don't want that fake stuff. That fake stuff temporary. I'm trying. To, I want longevity in the industry. I don't want to just be hot for a month or two. I write. I gotta write my like songs. I write my songs. I can freestyle. Cause that's how I started. But nowadays, a lot of people don't write. They don't. Uh, they don't write their stuff down. But in my opinion, I believe you should write. You know, just let it flow shit, off. Shit. Be consistent, man. I can't stress that enough. Don't don't be comfortable. Don't ever get comfortable because it's always something high you can reach, man. Like I can't stress that enough. You can't just sit and want Jay Z, for example. Jay Z wasn't just satisfied being a, a platinum selling artist. He had to start his own label. He had to start his own company, his own business. He had to branch off into other ventures. It's something always high. T uh, title. The new, the new uh, stream website that they launched. You know, Jay Z like, old, oh, he's old, and he's still not sitting down. He's moving, moving, open up doors for everybody else. So consistency is key, man. Don't ever get comfortable. I can't stress that enough. And with being real, be yourself, man. If you know you're not out here shooting people, don't rap about it. If you know you ain't out here just blowing money, don't rap about it, man. If your real name is Lee John. Rap about it, you know what I'm saying? Let people know who Lee John is. Be you, man. Like, don't know, if, if you trying to imitate something else that you're not, or somebody that's already out, why would labels want to sign you when they already got 10 other people on the label doing the same thing that you trying to do? You gotta stand out, man. You gotta give people a reason to want to put money behind you, a reason to want to market you, a reason to want to promote you. I'm telling you, man, if you just be yourself, Grind, you stay consistent, and put God in it, first of all. You know, keep God into it, and he gonna bless you, I promise you. Yeah. I got this black rose just for you. Just for you. Sincere. Thinking about my past, girl. Past, girl. Got me thinking about my last, girl. Last, girl. Got me lost off in the past. But a girl with a future curve, a nigga with a password. I'm so over the past, girl. So where you been? Where you been, huh? You know I need you more than ever just a